everyone. Um, today I'm going to be showing you a lot, well, most of my books. Keep in mind, this is not all. I know it's a lot of a book, book, but I'm a bookworm, so it's acceptable. That, that's why the channel is called Booksters. Anyways, um, I'm going to be showing you all my books, such as The Song of the Fire, Harry Potter, Captain Underpants Dog, Van Dyne, Ruby Kid, Percy Jackson. I have a lot of series. And um, not all of them are complete. Keep that in mind, too. Um, so let's start off with Harry Potter, as you see right here. I have the box set. <laughs> it's really heavy. And um, it has all seven books in paperback in a box set. And it has all of it right here, all the books and their artwork. And what I like about this box set is that he has this dragon all the way around it. With like Hermione and Ron and Harry all riding it. It's really good. But, um, and the first book in the series is called, I know you already know this, but I'm going to show you anyways, because this is a book tour. Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. This is number one, year one, at Hogwarts. And, um, yeah, there's not much else to say. I mean, I'm, I'm going to be reading soon, but not in this video. I'm just showing you what they are. That's another video. Next we have year two, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Um, this is year two. To be honest, it's kind of underrated, but that's for another video. And, uh, moving on, we have Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, year three, 22 chapters, so that's a lot. Um, yeah, this is one of the last ever shorter books, so. And this is actually one of my favorites, so, well, one of them. Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, year four. I know, it's long. I've read longer, though. And, um, yeah, exactly. And, um, basically, this is year four, another one of my personal favorites. And, um, yeah, I have a lot of favorites in this series. It's all very good. Next we have Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, my favorite movie, but I wouldn't say my favorite book. So, that's really good. And, um, oops. <laughs> Next we have Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, which is year six in the entire series. This is actually the last year he ever spent at Hogwarts. Year seven was actually, he was like somewhere else, like exploring the Wizarding World. And um, this is actually my number one personal favorite because we get to see Voldemort. And to be honest, um, this is my favorite book, but my least favorite movie. I don't know why. I, it just the movie doesn't really click with me, you know? Next we have the final, and actually my, my second favorite, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. Yeah. Um, to be honest, just a quick note, I think it was kind of a bad idea to split it into two movies, but that's for another time. <laughs> and, um, that's Harry Potter, so I'm just gonna put that off to the side. Yeet. And next we have Fire and Blood. I don't know if it will be more fitting to introduce the Song of the Fire first, because this is just an add-on, but whatever. <laughs> this is, it actually talks about Targaryen history. Congratulations if you know, but I'm not gonna explain what a Targaryen is for now. And, um, I haven't read it yet, actually, because I'm planning to finish The Song of the Fire first. But, um, this is really long and heavy, so I guess that's good. Or, I don't know. Next, we have A Song of Ice and Fire. What I like about this book is it has really cool artwork. This is actually the artwork for season two of the show, Game of Thrones. And, um, it has, and it has all the title of the book. I like how they put a Game of Thrones in that really cool font. And then we have the other four. I really hope he stays alive to, to write the last two books. He's almost done with Quinn's, so that's good, I guess. And um, basically, I'm just going to give you a run of what books there are in the series. Um, so we have A Game of Thrones, 807 pages, 72 chapters. But I read it all, so. <laughs> and um, it's really good. This is actually my favorite out of the two I've actually finished. I'm, I'm currently almost, well, I'm not even halfway through Storm of Swords, but it's really long, so. And, um, next we have A Clash of Kings. It's where kings clash. I know. <laughs> um, this is number two in A Song of Ice and Fire, or it may be better known as Game of Thrones, because that's the name of the show, and the show is a lot more popular. Next we have A Storm of Swords, the one I'm on. Um, is this, so far this is really good, I'm like 30 chapters in almost, out of 80, so that's gonna take a long time, but, um, anyways, this is really good so far, I like how, um, how, like, 
there's a lot of suspense and i like how a lot of the, the chapters they start off you start groaning when you realize oh this is a, a, a caitlin or or a sansa chapter uh this character is so boring right but then at the end you're like oh my god i need to know what happens next that's what i really like about the series it gets you like unexcited to start it but then you really need to know what happens next next we have a feast for crows it's where crows have a feast and <laughs> and um Oh, human crows, the back, the back of it says. Um, I think they're talking about the Night's Watch because the wildlings, they refer to them as crows. So I'm guessing they're talking about the Night's Watch. And um, this, I've heard it's really bad because it, because, and I think it's really bad because no, John. <laughs> no, John. That's really, that's really bad about it. And um, next we have a dance with dragons. This has the mo um, John has the most chapters in this book, so I guess that makes up for a feast for crows. And um, basically, what the, what happens in this book is um, people dance with dragons. Yeah. <laughs> well, I wouldn't know. I didn't read it yet. But um, so um, yeah. And did I talk about the artwork? Wait, I already did. Never mind. But I didn't talk about the sides yet. So this has Tyrion Lannister, my second favorite character, and this is my favorite character, Jon Snow. And um. I'm not just saying that these are my favorites just because they're on the box. They're genuinely my, my favorites. And, um, yeah, that's A Song of Ice and Fire. Next, we're moving on to The, uh, the Lord of the Rings. It's where um, a guy is a lord full of rings. <laughs> and um, I actually have this as a trilogy. I know he wrote this um, with, the intent, with the intention of, like, one huge book. But I have it as a trilogy, so, that, so that's okay. And we also have The Hobbit, so that's cool. It has Bilbo or Frodo, to be honest, I'm not sure. Um, well, a Hobbit coming out of their hole. And that's, it's the same on all, weird. And um, basically the books are The Hobbit. Um, basically, this is really short. I have no idea why I didn't finish it yet. I think I'm trying to like focus more on A Song of Ice and Fire, so like, this is really short, only about 325 pages, not much. Um, next we have book one, I call this books because, you know, they're in three separate books, obviously I'm gonna call them that. Book one, The Fellowship of the Ring. Um, I, I completely understand it's supposed to be one huge novel, but I have it as three, so. The Fellowship of the Ring, which is part one in Lord of the Rings. Um, so yeah. God, I'm gonna have a lot of fun cleaning this up afterwards. <laughs> Next we have The Two Towers. I haven't read it yet, so I don't know. Part two, and uh, people say this is a chore and not much. It's only about 330 pages. I've read longer. I've read longer. Like, turn the camera to it. I finished that. <laughs> and um, next we have The Return of the King, the conclusion to um, The Lord of the Rings. So that's cool. Uh, again, not much to say about these books. I'm just kind of telling you the titles. So that's Lord of the Rings. Yeet. Next up, The Hunger Games. We have, I have no idea what that is, but um, there's a bird with arrows, with an arrow sticking out of it. That's bad, it looks bad. And um, as you can see, they're advertising that she's already writing a new novel. Yeah, it's already out. But um, I didn't collect it yet because I don't see it as a true Lord of the Rings. It's more like a prelude. Kind of like how I don't really see The Hobbit as a Lord of the Rings book. It just takes place in the same universe. Um, so the first book in the series is The Hunger Games. It's um, it's where someone plays a video game about hunger. <laughs> I'm kidding. That's not really what it's about. I'm just kind of like making a fun world wordplay on this title, on these titles, as you can see. So that's The Hunger Games, part one. Yeet. Next week. Oh wait, that's book three. Never mind. Um, this is Catching Fire. It's where this guy um, gets um, hands or hands and plays catch with a ball of fire. Kidding, that's not really how it goes, but. <laughs> that's Catching Fire. I haven't read it yet. I, I, I haven't really read a lot of these books, by the way. But I finished most of them, so. Mocking Jay. I did not finish this because I didn't even finish book one. <laughs> it's Mocking Jay, so yeah. That is The Hunger Games. Next we have Big Fat Notebook. 
it's not much of a series with the storyline. I just like to keep it because, you know, exams. I need it. All right, so first we have American history. The reason I have it in a specific order, because on the back they're saying, um, collect, uh, it says ace all the middle school, and they're just like showing them, and I, I'm almost in middle school, so that's good. Going to sixth grade next year. Um, basically, um, it has all these books in this specific order. So we have American history. Next we have, wait, let me just yeet this off to the side. Next we have, um, Everything you need to ace world history. The, the, the previous one was American history, and this is the entire world. Talks about stuff like the Renaissance and the rise of Islam, a bunch of other historic stuff. So, that's world history. Next, we have science. This was the first I ever collected, um, because at the time, I was really into science. I'm still really into science, but now I'm really into computer science. I want to be a software engineer when I grow up, so. Science. I think I might want to get a computer science book for my birthday. So. And next we have math. Basically, we have basically this talks about math. It teaches you all the concepts like geometry, pi, fractions, negative numbers, all of this good stuff. This is my personal favorite, by the way. Math. Next, we're moving on to my second longest series in a year the first being um diary of a kid but as you can see i'm missing two books i don't know where the first one and the ninth one went but first we have captain underpants um it's called the adventures of captain underpants so all right it's called the adventures of captain underpants next we have um captain underpants and the attack of the talking toilets it's where toilets talk and they attack <laughs> No, seriously, that's what happens. And next we have book three, Captain Underpants and the Invasion of the Incredibly Naughty Cafeteria Leaders from Outer Space and the Subsequent Assault of the Equally Evil Lunch Room Zombie Nerds. <laughs> oh God, this is book three and um, yeah, that's that's it. I, I'm, I'm gonna let the title speak for itself. I'm not gonna repeat that again. <laughs> next we have Captain Underpants and the Perilous Plot of Professor Poopy Pants. Wow. <laughs> this was the fourth one. Yeet. Next we have <clears throat> Captain Underpants and the Wrath of the Wicked Wedgie Woman. So basically, this woman, you know, she gets wedgies. So. I'm gonna let the title speak for itself from now on. Next we have Captain Underpants and the Big Bad Battle of the Bionic Booger Boy, Part 1 The Night of the Nasty Nostril Memories. That's a mouthful. <laughs> That's number six, and um, yep, yeet. Next we have Captain Underpants and the Big Bad Battle of the Bionic Booger Boy Part Two: The Revenge of the Ridiculous Robo Boogers. <laughs> My God, these titles are long, by the way, as you can see. Um, the seventh epic novel, so yeah, pretty epic actually. Next we have Captain Underpants and the Preposterous Plight of the Purple Potty People. Why are these titles so long? <laughs> anyway, Captain Underpants, so yeah, that's the eighth one. Eighth out of twelve. Next we have Captain Underpants and the Terrifying Return of Tippy Trinkle Towers. Alright, so just a little note. Remember Professor Poopy Pants? Apparently he got mad because people kept making fun of his name, so he went and changed it to Tippy Tinkle Trousers. Cause yeah, that's 10 times better. <laughs> and um, basically he comes back and that's why it's called The Return, because it's the same person but different name body. Next we have Captain Underpants and the Revolting Revenge of the Radioactive Roboxers, which is the 10th, still concerning the same person, uh, Professor Poopy Pants, or Tinkle Trousers, cause that's 10 times better. <laughs> and um, yeah. Number 11, um, Captain Underpants and the Tyrannical Retaliation of the Turbo Toilet 2000. Why are these titles so god dang long? So anyways, this is number 11 out of 12. We're almost there, people. And, um, this is it, where he's, I don't know what he's doing. Captain Underpants and the, and the Sensational Saga of Sir Stinks a Lot. Or is it Sega? I don't know. 
this is the artwork where uh, he's a superhero now and basically at the end of this um you may want to skip forward for like 10 seconds well spoiler alert spoiler alert um basically what happens is he basically there's a lot of time travel i feel like always in the last movie of a sake up or book whatever um there's always time travel involved and um, he actually loses his powers in the end of this book so dog man i just yeah it's really long <laughs> Um, I just collected Fetch 22 and, and Grime and Punishment um, yesterday, actually. It came from Amazon. I know, I miss Fetch 22. Don't kill me. Um, first, we have Dogman, the first ever book in the series. Basically, well, I'm not going to give too many spoilers here. <sighs> I'm going to have a lot of fun cleaning this up. Next we have Dogman Unleashed, book two. It's where um, his leash gets removed. <laughs> um, that's Unleashed, yeah. Next we have Dogman, A Tale of Two Kitties. So um, yeah, it's a wordplay on the book, A Tale of Two Cities. And actually in Fetch 22, there's a chapter called The Fetcher in the Sky. That's a wordplay on the book, The Catcher in the Rye. So just, just a little note there. Dogman, A Tale of Two Kitties, so. Next we have Dogman and Cat Kid. So basically they become superheroes here. Yay. Uh, basically by day he's a police officer. By night he's a superhero. <laughs> um, basically he goes, well not specifically by night, but I'm gonna stop talking about. Next we have Dogman, Lord of the Fleas. Um, Lord of the Fleas. Um, well, to be honest, it was kind of weak. I know, don't kill me, but it was kind of weak, to be honest. Not not the best book in the world. Brawl of the Wild, even weaker. <laughs> it's not that, well, I wouldn't say weak, but it's just not that enjoyable, you know? I wouldn't put it up there with the best ones. Next we have Dogman, For Whom the Ball Rolls. Basically, well, I'm going to let the title speak for itself, even though it has nothing to do with what happens in it. Dogman, Fetch 22. I'm just going to explain um, why they're, why it's called Fetch 22. Fetch, because he's a dog. That, that's primarily what dogs do. And 22, because um, the main villain is an army of tadpoles. And there are 22 tadpoles. So that's why. Next, we have Dogman, Grime and Punishment. It's a wordplay on crime and punishment. So, yeah, that's kind of obvious, but... Wow, that's actually a bigger pile than I thought. <laughs> we have Diary of a Wimpy Kid. Yeah, it's pretty long. I'm actually missing The Long Haul and Book One. Don't know how that happened, but trust me, I own them. Please, trust me on this one. First, we're starting off with Roderick Rules because I lost number one. So Roderick Rules, it's where Roderick becomes a rule. I learned. <laughs> I learned. Um, the last straw, this is where, when there's an empty box full of straws, and he's about to take the last one, so, <laughs> kidding, it's not really what happens. Trust me, when I put some sort of wordplay, like, it's when this kind of stuff happens, trust me, that's not really what happens, it's just the wordplay. So, um, the last straw, that's book three, we have book four, another one of my personal favorites, Dog Days. This is actually my favorite movie, even though I only saw, like, well, yeah, we don't really own it, but I saw it before, so that's good. Um, can I, I'm just gonna make a quick note about the movies, by the way. There were three, not four. I don't, I don't count whatever the heck no, um, um, number four was. I don't count what that was. That's not an Iron Man Begin movie. Um, basically, Dog Days was the third. I don't know why. They, I think what they did when they made movies was they combined The Last Straw and Dog Days. I think that was really cool. Because, um... Because if I remember correctly, I only saw it once, so I don't really remember. Um, basically, I think this was the movie where um, his dad was trying to send him to to, um, to military school. That that happened in book three, but I, I'm guessing they combined it. Try, tell me if I'm wrong in the comments. Next, we have The Ugly Truth. It's where the truth is personified and he's ugly. Um, basically, yeah, this is... Nah, not really. Yeah. Next, we have... 
Can I win the kid? Number six, Cabin Fever. Again, one of my, well, actually one of my favorites, actually, to be honest. Um, yeah. And the third wheel is where um, a car is missing. The fourth wheel. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, basically, Rowley and the other girl, Abigail, are in a relationship now. That's why he's, he's the third wheel. Fine. Hard luck. Um, you know, not much to say about this one. Old school. I know, I know. I'm missing long haul. Don't kill me. Um, old school. This is not really one of my favorites. I mean, it's okay. It's okay. You know, like, I acknowledge its existence. It's, it's pretty good. Probably in the top 10, I would say. Double down. It's where, um, he's in trouble now, basically. <laughs> I don't really know how to explain this, so I'm just gonna yeet it off to the side. Wow, that was huge. Um, next we have Zyaketoe. It's where they get away from their troubles by going to a paradise, but now they're, ba they're banned from paradise. Oops. Trouble always seems to find the halfways. <laughs> Next we have the meltdown, number 13. Um, basically, they're having a... Basically, there's like... Hey, can I show you something epic, by the way? Hold on, give me a minute. Uh, I'm sorry, guys. Like, all right, look. On pages 206 to 207, utter chaos. You see it? Do you see it? It's like utter chaos. There's no words, just a huge illustration. Wow. It was really chaotic. They had a snowball fight. Yeet. <clears throat> Next, we have Wrecking Ball. Um, they're, um, they're doing renovations in this book, actually. Because um, a, a relative just died and they left a lot of money, so they're trying to use that for renovations. And it all got wrong. The deep end. If I remember correctly, they're trying to hit the road because um, they're stuck in a basement in Grandma's house. At first, when I first read this, I thought I thought he was talking about how he's in quarantine, so that's why he's he's very pissed off. But then I realized it is because you know he's trapped inside the basement. Or maybe quarantine might be a contributing factor. Whatever. So that's Diary of Wimpy Kid, or at least what I own so far. Um, next we have Percy Jackson. Um, Percy Jackson, basically, what I like about this format of the, of the books, like the U.S. paperback or whatever, um, it's it, it all like one continuous poster, or like not poster, but like picture. You see how the beginning of his arm, uh, the crook of his elbow is right here, but then it just continues on and there's smoke which continues and the maze continues in this book and a lot of stuff I'm not really going to get into. First we have Percy Jackson and the Olympian number one, the lightning thief. It's where he, he steals lightning. No, he doesn't, but... <laughs> Next we have Percy Jackson, and Percy Jackson and the Olympians, the sea of monsters. I swear they go into the ocean and there's monsters. Not much to say about it. Um, the Titan's Curse. I'm just gonna let, for those of you who read it, I'm just gonna let it speak for itself. This is actually one of my favorite books. My, well, my second favorite, my first being the last one. I feel like in series, the last one is always one of the, was one of the best. It's also one of the most stressful. You need to end the series on a good note, don't you? Right? So, um, first Jackson and the Olympians, number four, The Battle of the Labyrinth. This where basically, no, this time this actually did happen, spoiler alert, alert. Um, they were in like a huge fight in the labyrinth and it, it's a quest, basically, so. <sighs> the last Olympian. There's a lot that happens in this book. Um, Kronos dies, Luke dies. Spoiler alert, spoiler alert, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. Um, um, Annabeth and Percy become boyfriend, girlfriend. You know, a lot of good stuff happened in this book. Yeet. Next we have... The bad guys. Oh, wait, this is backwards. Well, this is book one, bad guys. I don't have, like, I only have book one, two, and seven. Um, I'm not really into the bad guys. It's just something I collected. The bad guys, book one. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, maybe that's the bad guys, number two. Mission Unpluckable, a wordplay on Mission Impossible. And next we have the bad guys the in do you think he saw us yes i do think he saw us do you see his eyeball <laughs> um yeah next we have 
soul novels. Well, except for these two. These are continuous ones. We have Pax. I'm not really sure. Well, this is one of the lesser known ones. It's not really, I didn't really read it so far, but I acknowledge its existence. Next, we have It. A thousand, one, 1,141 pages, something like that. 1,150, more like. But, um, yeah, it's really long. I actually finished it, so. It's a bookworm. I'm a bookworm. Pet Cemetery. I also finished it. Um, this is actually, this is one of those books where I didn't really realize how scary it truly was until after I finished it, and my mind was just unraveling what happened. And then I realized, oh my god, that was terrifying. <laughs> Next we have The Trials of Apollo. I only have books 1 to 2. I know, I know, there's 5, don't kill me. Um, I finished The Hidden Oracle, and I barely read anything in book 2, to be honest. Not much to say about that. First we, next we have scary story series scary stories to tell in the dark so um yeah more scary stories to tell in the dark even more scary stories scary stories to chill your bones as you can see this is book three and um the, the artwork is it's questionable concerning a bit next we have the final series <laughs> i survived Finally, this took a long time. Um, we have I Survived the American Revolution. I like to sort it in, in, in the events that it took place. We have the American Revolution. Yeah, it's a war. Don't know what a kid was doing in a war, but. The Children's Blizzard, 1888. Um, this is actually one of the more sad ones and tragic ones because it's called the Children's Blizzard. You know why? Because the majority of the children, of the people who died in there were children. So that's really sad. Phew! Last two. The Hindu Hindberg Disaster, 1937. Um, I didn't really, like, read this much, to be honest. Oh, oops. The Attack of the Grizzlies, 1967. This is the most recent one I own. I know there are others. I know. That's it! All my books. <laughs> I'm a bookworm! Like I said, it's a lot of books. Bye!